Hey everybody, welcome back to Sportsnet Central Montreal. Now Patriots quarterback Tom Brady has captured his fourth Super Bowl and third Super Bowl MVP award at last weekend. And Stephen Brunt joins us now for the last word on Brady. But before we get to that, Stephen, i got to get your opinion on the last play from the Seahawks. This is what everyone's talking about. Yeah, I think I thought the same thing everybody else thought, Wilder. Why Why would you do that? Uh, I, I think I can come up with a football explanation. You know, listening to what Pete Carroll said afterwards, I think they reacted to a formation, reacted to personnel, looked at their charts and said, this is what we should do. But at a certain point, you know, common sense overrides that. And you've got a great running back, a power running back who'd almost scored on the play before. Why not just give him the ball? I think everybody, all Seahawks fans were saying that in the moment. And all Patriots fans were jumping for joy at the interception. I guess they just overthought the play, right? Yeah, I think so. I think it's one of those cases where sometimes it's a coach, it's a coach heavy league, right? And sometimes you overcoach. I think that's what happened there. Okay, well, let's get back to Brady now for a second. After the win, Julian Elliman says, there's no contest. Brady is the best quarterback ever. Are you ready to crown him this? It's a tricky one, right? And I, and I take nothing away from Tom Brady. I think the six Super Bowl appearances, uh, the four wins, you know, the other two games they could have won, you know, and, and the, the way they didn't really lose on Tom Brady's account, a couple of crazy catches beat them, and a non-catch by Wes Welker. So, I, I, look, I, I have I, – but I saw Joe Montana as well. And I think if, you know, in my lifetime, those are the two guys. Montana won his four. You could argue that Montana had a better supporting cast. He certainly has a different, slightly different skill set than Brady. But I think one of the things that is in Brady's favor is the fact that, you know, look who he's played with on that offense. The way the Patriots operate, they get rid of players. There's no Hall of Famers, with maybe the exception of Randy Moss, that he's played with in those four Super Bowls. They got rid of their best offensive lineman in the middle of this season. Logan Mankins tra traded him away, and Brady has made everyone around him better. That's an incredible accomplishment. He didn't have a Jerry Rice, and Joe Montana had a Jerry Rice. A lot of players are also judged on the, the end of their careers. And speaking about the end of Brady's career now, this is a kind of a strange story. Uh, Brady's father says it will end badly in New England. We've seen other star quarterbacks like Favre and Manning end things with their team on sour notes. Do you expect the same for Brady? Well, I guess it depends how long he wants to play and if he wants to, you know, if he's dogged about that. Because one thing we know about the Patriots organization with Bill Belichick, they're not sentimental. Like, everybody's expendable. Brady is the one point of continuity in that team. And obviously they have had a great, the Brady-Belichick pairing has been incredibly successful. But they drafted his successor, a guy everybody thinks is going to be his successor last year, Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, they're going to groom him. You know, Brady wants, if he wants to play until he's 40 or beyond that even, um, he's probably going to have to do something like Montana did, which is play for another team in another uniform. It didn't end well for Joe Montana, and I don't think it would necessarily end well for Tom Brady. It would be heartbreaking to break up that Brady-Belichick uh, duo. Hey, Stephen, thanks for your uh, insight on this, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Wilder.